fair data, um, and in particular, how Figshare can help. Um, so thank you for all for your time. And as Handoko has uh, introduced me before, um, my name is Stephanie Guichard, and I work for Digital Science, uh, which is the technological company that deals with um, every aspect of the research lifecycle. And these are some of the brands uh, that Digital Science has. Um, I'm based in Melbourne, Australia, so I'm not too far away from you, but uh, in time, I'm about three hours ahead. Um, and I actually focus on Figshare, which is up here, um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. But I also uh, deal with the other portfolio company called Altmetric, which looks at um, research attention, um, which is complementary to bibliometrics, and we can always talk about that at another time. Um, so today I thought we would talk about three different aspects. Um, first of all, what is FAIR? And secondly, what is Figshare? And third, how can we actually achieve and preserve FAIR data um, and research? So the first one is, what is FAIR exactly? For those of you who are not very familiar with what FAIR is, and I won't go into reading out what is on the screen here, but it's basically about finding, uh, accessing, interoperating with, and reusing research data. Um, I, I like to actually concentrate on the second column here with the application to all of the research outputs, and that can include mainly data, but any kind of scholarly activity or scholarly output. So this means that it can be found easily. It can be searched on Google, for example, or other services. Uh, and they have specific identifiers that allow us to know what it is. So it could be an Excel spreadsheet. It was authored by John Smith at the University of York, um, who actually funded it and how it's being accessed. Then the accessibility component is about being able to view it, to download it, and to be read. And it's also preserved and hosted in a secure place so everyone can access it, whether or not they're academic or a general member of the public. The interoperability aspect is about how they can be reused as, as, as needed. So this can mean interoperating with other systems and platforms or how it could be referenced or cited in other literature. And the reusable component is about how that can actually be used. How can it be reused and reproduced without any uh, duplication efforts and how that can actually be incorporated into a new piece of research. So it's a big life cycle of research. So to put it very simply, um, the FAIR data principles looks at finding the piece of research, discovering it, making it as accessible as possible. So on platforms that anyone can access, it's in a, a way in which people can download it and view it. And then um, lastly, it's reusable. So that can be under a Creative Commons license. It can have instructions on how the piece of research can be used. And I like to actually, found, I found this slide from a previous Figshare Fest. So Figshare has these um, international research community days uh, globally around the world. Um, and it shows about how research should aim to be fair. So good things about it, again, being online, having it accessible by everybody. It should be in a lot of different formats or as open formats as possible. And there should be a lot of interesting descriptions and instructions on how to use it. So. That means please do not put your research somewhere in a filing cabinet under a leaking pipe. Um, don't make it as hard to get to as possible. Um, make it as um, openly available so that people can actually use it and read it. And oh well, if it explodes when it's read, then it can't be reusable. It's lost to the world of research. So in the application to all research outputs, uh, outputs are basically anything that's data. So what is data? Data is anything that is literally um, anything affiliated to your academic research. So that means data sets and raw data, like your Excel spreadsheets. It could be figures like graphs um, and charts. They could be papers and preprints, and we're seeing a lot of preprints now, especially because of COVID. Um, it could be a book, a book chapter, or a monograph. It could be um, PhD theses and dissertations and essays. Uh, they could be posters and presentations from conferences or internal workshops. Um, 
And this could also be code and software, so how to build a program, for example. Um, it could be a media file, so it could be audio and visual, or one or, one or both performances and events. So this is also support for the non-scientific communities and also support for the arts and creative works. It could be a transcription. So a transcription can be um, <clears throat> a written record of an interview, for example. Uh, it could be an online resource. So it could be also educational information, or it could be about a physical object that has no digital life just yet. And there is a lot more that could be covered in what a research output or what data could be. So how do you actually make your research content fair? Um, there is actually a fair test that you could um, uh, go to on the ARDC, the Australian Research Data Commons website. And it actually gives you some ideas on how to make your, your data or your content as fair as possible. So there are all these little questions that you can test to see whether or not your methods are working and to see whether or not you're actually uh, being as open as possible and so that your work can be discovered, so that it is findable, so that it is um, accessible, can it interoperate with other systems or other people, and can it be reused? So I, I highly suggest that you go to this website and you can check it out. So the second part um, I just wanted to touch on for those who aren't very familiar with what Figshare is. Um, Figshare is essentially an all purpose digital repository. So this is where all of your content can be hosted. It can be preserved. It can be shared. And then once your research is ready for publication, uh, Figshare can mint a DOI. It can be mixed. Um, it can be published under a, a license of your choice to promote its reuse and its remixing. Um, and it is on a, a public platform that is easily accessible and Google findable. So it is, in essence, a way in which you can uh, have a way to discover uh, published content and research, and then maybe even gain some metrics on it, including citations. Um, so this is where you can store, you can manage, and you can publish all types of content. So as uh, mentioned before, these can be your uh, data and data sets, your code, your papers, presentations, other non-traditional research outputs. This is basically what research data is. Data is essentially anything that has to do with what you're working on, what you have worked on, what goes with a published article, what goes with a presentation. So once you put them up on Figshare and you decide to publish, it gets a data site DOI so that it can be citable and it can be discoverable. Um, the ways in which we have our audiences interacting with the platform is that mainly they want to get credit for the accomplishments they have made. And this includes negative data as well as positive data so that all researchers have a place to uh, be able to talk about and reuse content. It's hosted, so that means you don't have anything to worry about with preservation, so it can last until the end of time. And even if that means only the metadata of your data is um, accessible, but so there's information, there's a record of it somewhere, and it can be in any file format and it is accessible anywhere as long as there's an internet connection. Um, a lot of our users and academics use uh, Figshare for not just publishing, but use it as a private storage space. So this means that um, work that is in progress can be uh, collaborated upon. It can be shared with uh, different audiences, such as uh, external uh, collaborators from other universities. It could be for blind peer review and all the content. If it doesn't have a file to be consumed, can be a metadata only record. It could be a linked record that lives somewhere else. Um, and those uh, contents and research works can be also marked confidential. So that means if it's sensitive information, you can expose the metadata, but the files are not exposed publicly or you can embargo the content. So there are ways in which a lot of people use it publicly for their research works and then privately as well. So this is just a way in which you can showcase uh, your institution's research with a custom domain and branding, uh, the, the storage allocations um, and previewable files. And I'll go into that in a moment. And basically it supports the FAIR principles and FAIR goals. 
um, as well as the data preservation uh, policies that you might have in place. It complies with also funder, um, publisher, and maybe even governmental policies uh, by publishing open access. Um, and these are just two examples of some of our custom branded figure portals. So the first one is from uh, South Africa. So there are all these universities in South Africa that use Figshare for hosting and promoting their research content. Um, and this is Kilt Hub, which is a university in uh, Carnegie Mellon University in the US. Uh, so they've basically branded it as a hub rather than a repository as such. Um, and this is also a way in which collections can be curated um, and branded at a different institutional levels. So this means you could have a different landing page for a different group or department. It could be by a theme. So this example is uh, a particular discipline in, in aerospace, aerospace engineering from a particular university, which is Cranfield, I believe. Um, and this is basically showcasing those types of research outputs. Uh, whether or not their data sets or files or presentations, they have to do with aerospace and they come from that university. Um, all of the public outputs has its own citable and customized DOI. So this is just an example of a record um, from the University of Sheffield that's showcasing 43 different files. So it doesn't have to be um, one item at a time. It can be a multitude or a, a, a file set of different uh, research data outputs um, and it's a way in which it can also gain a lot of metrics. So this is a really good example of showing, uh, you know, usage metrics like views and downloads, altmetric attention, and then maybe along the way there may be some citations and Figshare is one of the repositories out there that actually counts uh, data citations. So hosting and storing public um, or collaborating privately, as I've mentioned before, it's a way in which you can then preview all of your work before it gets published so you can see whether or not it looks right, uh, whether or not it should be changed in any way, um, and whether or not maybe you should collaborate with another uh, author or uh, another group just to see whether or not your, your work should be discoverable in this manner. Um, all of the previews of the uploaded data have those open licenses and, and policies to promote that data reuse. So um, the default licenses will be the Creative Commons, CC BY 4.0, and as well as CC0, but it can be defined at your university as well. And all of the um, file extensions um, are supported and there are about 1,200 different formats that Figshare can um, preview in the browser. So you have no added uh, software to download in order to view the files. So this also means that not only is it findable, but it's also accessible to those who may not have particular software for their machines. So again, um, with metrics, we're seeing now that a lot of metrics, uh, it's not just about the downloads, it's not about the views. We're also looking at alternative metrics like alt metrics, um, and we're also looking at the citations. So data citations are now something um, to aim for just because it's not a published paper it could be a data set that actually has you know been cited and referenced and reused in another person's work and that work doesn't necessarily have to be another paper either so that's quite um, a way in which you can measure new uh, valuable impact um, measurements as well and then we've also got the reporting so this means you can investigate where in the world people are actually finding the content, how they're finding it. So is it through their university site? Is it through their uh, Google browser? Is it through their phone? Is it through Twitter? So it could be a multitude of ways in which people are actually trying to find content, how they're finding it, and how they're reusing that data as well. And finally, there's a, a public profile page for every researcher. So this also means that you can find out more about who is being published on Figshare, who their networks are, so their collaborators and co-workers and co-authors, uh, what other publications that you might have out there, their location, a brief biography, and um, it syncs up with ORCID. So, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Australian New Zealand region where I'm based, um, ORCID is very heavily used as a, a researcher identifier. So it ensures that 
everything that is open access can be represented and synced up to the ORCID profile. And so this also means you can get <clears throat> more recognition for publishing open access, but it's also a way in which people can find you. And, and especially if you have similar names to other people, you at least have an identity using ORCID. So how to use Figshare? It's quite really, it's quite simple. There is an, an upload form, so you can drag and drop your files. You give everything a title, um, you know, record the authors, certain categories that your research pertains to, an item type, some keywords for easy discoverability, and a description. And the description is where you talk about your methodologies. This is where you could repurpose your work, um, and this is how it could be interoperated with other systems. Um, and then you can apply your licenses, you can include funding information, and then you can also customize your metadata um, according to your university's hierarchy or structures. It could be by a group or a discipline or a theme. And so everything that has a green dot in the submission form basically means those are mandatory in order to get, get a DOI and publish your item. And then this is where you essentially store and manage um, and then eventually publish all of your research. So everything that you have in your Figshare account um, will have a status. So if it's fully green, that means it's open, um, openly uh, published. Um, it's consumable on the web. People can find it. People can access it. It can be interoperated um, with uh, other sites and platforms, and it can then be reusable dependent on your um, your license that you've um, given it. And just touching on the third part of how can we achieve and preserve as well, uh, fair data and research and how can Figshare help in that sense? So briefly, um, Figshare was launched back in 2012. Um, actually, it was mainly used for publishers with their public um, with their data that went along with a publication. It then opened up to the university space and it was mainly for data sharing. And it was for the goal was for individual researchers to share their files that would probably go unnoticed and not published anywhere. So one of the early goals and as part of Mark Hannell, Mark Hannell is our um, CEO and founder of Figshare. He wanted to be able to not only just showcase his publications, but also publish his different um, data that went with all of his publications as well, whether or not they were positive or negative results. And so it was a way in which it was reducing duplication of work that other researchers may have been doing in a similar field. It was to encourage the citations of the data itself. It was also for the reuse. Um, and also to claim right and credit for the hard work that goes into actually creating research and publishing it in the first place. Um, so scientific knowledge and not just scientific knowledge, but just scholarly knowledge in general accrues at a faster rate if those results are published and not those the results that will be held in high esteem, i.e. in a particular journal or a particular publisher that publishes your work for you. So Figshare was using this as an, uh, an easy way for individual researchers. They may have had limited funds. It was a way in which they could use the platform to publish uh, open access, not pay uh, an, an APC charge for their uh, to their publisher, and it was a way in which they could receive that credit faster. Um, and this part of Figshare's mission statement and its core beliefs uh, everything should basically be as open as possible and closed as necessary. So that means as findable as possible, as accessible as possible. Um, so it is preserved and secure somewhere, but it might not be as open as it should be, but closed as necessary. Um, and it should never be, be behind a paywall. So that talks to the uh, accessibility component of FAIR. Um, it should be human as well as uh, machine readable and queryable. So that means if someone like me or someone else at your university can find, can access, can interoperate with it and reuse it, so should machines. And machines meaning that things can be transferred from one platform to another platform without difficulty and that it should be held um, as a record on one platform to another platform, but they should be talking to each other and not being uh, entered twice or three times or four times. 
um, infrastructure should always be interchange interchangeable, and that's very true nowadays with technology always changing. So this means support for different platforms, different systems. Uh, researchers should not have to put in that information into multiple systems at the same institution more than once. Um, everything should have an identifier, such as a DOI, because it is the most persistent and sustainable and international standard of identifying research. Um, and then the impact of research is independent of where it is published and what type of output it is. And that also talks to the fact that the paper, the journal article nowadays, is does not or should not carry the same weight um, and the same merit uh, as something that isn't a journal article. It can be anything. It could be your media file. It could be your presentation or your poster or your PhD thesis. So these are just examples of now what is now considered data. So data is not just uh, a graph. It can be a poster. It can be your media file. It could be your Excel spreadsheet. It is linked um, to something that may, may be already published. It could be part of a publisher um, repository as well. It should be part of your institution and it should belong to you. Um, and you can set the, the, the ways in which people should interact with it. And it should be hosted, secured and be preserved um, in a manner where people can access it in any time. One uh, example here is the National Institutes of Health. Um, they have, as a funder, they have decided that anything that is funded by them has to be open and has to be accessible. Um, so we now have an agreement where uh, anyone who has received funding from the NIH has to publish on their dedicated Figshare portal. And there are now also ways in which <clears throat> uh, persistent and preserved data can be uh, in the same place, and that is in the, the form of different versions of the same research output. So that means if you're publishing something, for example, in this version one, which is old, that can be pu pushed publicly. It can have its DOI, it can have its online presence, but then down the line, uh, it can be uh, edited and modified so that there is more information, so that there are more uh, ways in which people can reproduce this, and so it actually adheres to FAIR. So also accessing the older versions may help other researchers when they're looking at the current version. Um, and this might be of interest to you. It's actually like a, uh, a poster about increasing research on Figshare using the FAIR data principles. Um, it basically talks about the why, whys and hows of publishing open access, how everything is stored and preserved securely in one place. Um, it's in any format and for any output and it pertains to any discipline. Um, and with a lot of descriptions, you can get as much uh, metrics and, and um, citations as possible. And it's most importantly, it's one way to get an identifier for your research. Um, and, and in this way, everything is more discoverable. It's a showcase, pa showcase page for you as a researcher. It can be tagged for many uses, so that again talks to the interoperability of preserved data. And it then it also talks about the optimal reuse of your work itself. Um, and these are a bit small, but these are just the, um, the other um, portals that we, we partnered up with. So this one, Kilt Hub, is an, an academic institution, it's a university. This is Chem Archive, which is a preprint server. So we're seeing a lot of preprints coming out. Uh, we also have support for the publishers. So this one is Open Biology, part of the Royal Society. And then we also work with governments and funders such as the National Institutes of Health. Um, I'm just gonna now touch on uh, some of the drivers for FAIR data and research. Um, and it, mainly it's to do with compliance. So compliance can mean Anything that is within your jurisdiction, whether or not it's a policy within your university or your country, or the government says, if you have public funds uh, that you are using for your research, you have to make it open and everyone, including the public, needs to know about it. So there are some standards there. It's also transparency. It's also ticking off uh, your your requirements that are needed from you based on your research ethics as well and protocols. 
So it's sticking to the rules, it's by law, it's by jurisdiction, and it actually creates uh, less paperwork or less of a paper trail if you do publish open access and make everything fair. Um, and as part of uh, digital science, we, uh, we, we conduct all of these different reports. Um, and this is an annual one called the State of Open Data. So from 2019, from last year, there was an analysis about articles about open data, which was curated by Figshare. So that means we uh, talked to some authors or surveyed authors uh, in different disciplines, and we asked them how they were actually sharing and publishing their data openly. And one of the questions was whether or not uh, funders globally should withhold their funding if researchers did not share their data. And nearly 70% said yes, um, because if they don't uh, share their content, they don't get more funding for their future research. Uh, so the data is just as important or even more important than the actual output um, of the, the, the publication itself. So whatever makes up a journal article in a big um, journal publisher like Nature or The Lancet, if that is not the primary output that you should be striving for, it's actually all of the data that makes up that paper that is then published in those big publisher uh, sites. So this is where a lot of researchers now understand and try to communicate the ways in which they want to be able to learn how to better share their data, how to make it fair, and how to uh, secure and preserve it uh, using their university systems, using repository solutions, uh, and, and using ways in which they can collaborate securely and, and privately before publishing them. Um, we're also seeing a lot of different agendas uh, that are global, that are looking at uh, the different ways in which there should be an open science policy. Um, so back in 2018, uh, at this conference at the European Open Science Cloud, uh, you know, there, there were talks about how the European Union could save 10.2 billion um, euros a year by actually using fair data. So that means talking about the funding and business models to make fair data sustainable. And that talks about the preservation and the accessibility of it, whether or not uh, universities within Europe were actually adhering to those standards of making everything uh, accessible. And also then uh, ensuring that, you know, uh, researchers were not duplicating efforts. So it was, it was basically uh, a way in which now with the open science movement that is kind of like exploding at the moment just because of the, the times that we're in now, any kind of data, whether it's negative, whether it's positive, whether it or not it's being conducted on three different platforms, that should all be accessible to everybody and it should not be behind a paywall. There was also in the US last year, um, the Open Data Act, so the Open Public Electronic and Necessary Act um, was mandated by the US federal agencies so that all non-sensitive government information, including research that was federally funded, uh, had to be accessible as open data, um, which is a huge step for the US, considering that they do have a lot of uh, ways in which sometimes um, information isn't disseminated correctly or, or uh, openly. Um, and that's where the National Institutes of Health came in um, and partnered up with Figshare. Um, and this also meant that any kind of data that um, was submitted to the NIH Figshare portal was reviewed or curated so that no personally identifiable information um, was leaked out. But all of the actual data and metadata and methods and descriptions and accessibility rights were published and made discoverable. So this is this review step um, ensures that everything is still aligned to the FAIR principles and is hosted and preserved in one place. Um, and this is just the, the screenshot of the NIH FigShare portal. Um, and then finally, there's a action plan from the European Commission um, about developing metrics for uh, FAIR digital objects. So whether or not those should um, uh, just be about assigning 
persistent identifiers and making them openly accessible. It was also for uh, those metrics to actually overtake, say, the traditional bibliometrics out there, like the journal impact factor, whether or not that could be adapted, whether or not that could be um, used for uh, used for assessment where data actually overpowers the publication of a journal article. Um, it was also implementing these metrics to see how researchers were actually using their data and research content um, over time and how they were sharing it and how they were publishing it. Um, and then funders could actually then have an idea of what their outcomes for those investments they've made over decades, over over years uh, were, were like and how um, certain disciplines might mature and how others might actually need more assistance. So with technology and expertise, um, this is more on a fig share side of things. Um, I like showing this slide. It's actually Mark Hamill's slide. Um, he likes to show that you have your, your, your data, your research output, your content. You can put it up on Figshare. And for humans, it's fair. Um, and for the moment, I think we're all uh, making everything better for humans, but what about machines? So it's findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable with humans. But for machines, it's still just findable and accessible. So we need to, we need to incorporate something extra to make it machine readable um, uh, or machine interoperable and reusable. And so you just add in experts, you add in expert reviewers or expert curators um, to, to review the content, to curate the content uh, based on their knowledge, their domain knowledge and expertise, um, dependent on their disciplines, uh, dependent on their skill sets uh, and language and education. And then we can make everything fair for humans and fair for machines. Um, and so this means there's an optional review workflow that uh, we, we give out to our institutional clients. And so this means prior to publication, someone will upload, fill out the submission form, um, and then send for publication, but it is under review. And this can be reassigned um, to other managers. It can be uh, looked at by your internal collaborators. It can be looked at by your heads of department. Uh, to ensure that all of the metadata is correct, uh, that all of the information is actually fair, um, and that it is uh, in the correct order, um, and, and basically it's a human check before it goes out into the world of the internet. So this is where you can check all the files before publication, um, and then even just edit or modify the metadata, and it could be published on the researcher's behalf. So this is giving, this is a very important role, I would say, for uh, universities who wish to review content that might be sensitive, uh, that may need assistance with, say, um, translations, or um, has been uh, previously submitted, but uh, failed the first um, um, approval uh, round. Uh, due to the fact that I had no information whatsoever before. So this is all about checking that everything is correct um, and should be published. Um, and finally, just identifying technology gaps and then making things fairer. Um, and in tune with the FAIR principles, this is just an example of how data is described with rich metadata. So everything in the red squares you can see um, is basically showing how it is findable. So everything can be cited, it can be downloaded, it can be embedded. This is how many files pertain to this record. Here's the title, here's what it is, the date and timestamp, the author, the metrics, the university, the specific categories and keywords, the license types. Um, whether or not it can be exported, so that's the interoperability aspect. Um, these are the metadata fields with uh, relevant information about this particular research data output record. Um, so if it can be findable within your own uh, repository platform, it should then be findable on other 
external platforms such as Google. Um, so Google is basically now the world's biggest search engine, but it should not just be Google, it could be for any um, um, international search engines or ones that are used in your own uh, regions and countries, um, whether or not it can be uh, also uh, uh, be part of a national metadata registry, whether or not it could be part of a network, uh, a national network or an international network, and that everything should be registered. It should be in a searchable resource. It should be on a platform that you use regularly to find the content. And then if the metadata is still accessible, which is great, even if the, the, the data itself is no longer available, it should be secured and preserved on one of those interchangeable platforms. So we, we talk about interchangeable technologies, uh, which is completely normal in, in today's, today's times. Things change, uh, technologies change every, I'm, I'm thinking like two to five years even, you know, are the phones that we have today are already outdated and, you know, Samsung and Apple are making the next generation of, uh, you know, mobile phones. So everything has to be um, available now, but on the next, uh, on the next platform or the system that a uh, university um, chooses to use for say the next five years. So even if the, the data itself is not accessible or could live somewhere else, there should be a link to it about what it is, how to use it, how to reuse it, and how to interoperate with it. Um, and it's also using metadata uh, in broadly applicable language for knowledge translation and representation. So this means using APIs to um, feed one system into another system. So as soon as a as as the researcher enters their their research data for publication, all of this gets tagged in the in the background, and that information can then be used in other systems internally or externally. And so this also means um, any kind of rich metadata or descriptions about your research can then be mapped. It can even have a different visibility for different audiences, um, and it can be it can mean that everything will be used within your institution, but can be also consumed elsewhere outside your institution. And it's also using vocabularies that follow the FAIR principles. So this also means using schema and using um, language that is important to you and that is also universally acknowledged. Um, in this case, categories, if you publish on Figshare, um, it, we, we use the Australian and New Zealand fields of research codes and categorize, categorization. Um, and a lot of people ask why, um, and it is because it is the most granular um, and the most accurate when it comes to actually tagging your research according to your discipline and according to your field of expertise. Um, and for the reusable aspects, um, we're meeting domain relevant community standards. This could be at a regional country or um, even a global level. And we're seeing a lot of these types of re requirements um, in tender documents. So requests for tenders, requests for proposals or information. Um, a lot of the mandatory obligations um, are about having identifiers or being able to mint an identifier to your research data who is your author or creator, and who are their collaborators or participants of the research data? Um, what type of titles can you give your research data or descriptions of it? Uh, whether or not it, it is affiliated with a publisher or another entity, um, and especially publication years or uh, the ways in which you can timestamp your research data and your projects, and the types of resource types. Um, so this means it's a general type of description with subcategories. So the more information you give about your research data, the more fair it'll be. Um, and especially if that particular research data is hosted and secured in a place that can be preserved for you know, the next 10 years. And so this also means um, actually coming up on our Figshare roadmap is being able to uh, put an edit um, particular metadata fields that pertain to a different discipline or a particular object type. And all of that information can then be walked over into 
uh, different systems to different platforms and be reusable that way. And so this is just an example of um, configuring a crosswalk for the Dublin core schema. And at the reusable aspect as well, it's basically looking at something that's being published that can be used and then someone else can create it using a chart. So it's using that information in the background, um, you know, in those source pages, um, using that information wisely to create something else. It, or it could be something like this. So something that is a graph initially can be reused by another researcher to create this visualization. So this is a way in which we can still support FAIR and especially in the reusable components. Um, and I'm nearly at the end, um, but I just wanted to end on how can we make all of these outputs FAIR? Um, first of all, I would think you would definitely want to preserve it somewhere secure, host it, um, and your end goal would be to make your data, content, and research fair. Make them as open and identifiable as possible, no matter what kind of output it is. Uh, secure and preserve it so it can be showcased and accessed by anybody. Um, give give the, the data research uh, content, outputs, whatever you want to call it, give it a rich description. Um, so that humans as well as machines can use it. Um, and then for reusability as well, uh, apply appropriate licenses so that the authors get credit and they're um, an attribution, but also that so others who know who who to contact and how to you know how to contact them for the reusability and purposes of their research too. And on that note, I would like to thank you for your time and I hope this was informative and useful for you. Okay, thank you, Steph, for your brief explanation about interesting topic on fair and data preservation. I believe that this topic is very um, important for us as a researcher and yes. as a media. And hopefully later on we can follow up some 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 suggestion from you uh, to support our uh, university publication and to ensure that our uh, our publication and maybe our research output can be accessed by uh, other people, not only in Indonesia but also from uh, around the world. Okay, yes. let's see the question. There are several questions here mm -hmm. uh, regarding sure. to your presentation. First, mm -hmm. from Anonymous, how can we manage different documents in fixture? What mm -hmm. type of document we can share and how long the document will be indexed in Google Scholar? Okay, those are good questions. So um, when you say, how can we manage different documents in Figshare? Really, all you have to do right now, if you have a free figshare.com account, you can actually just start uploading all of your, your different documents. So, so that could be your PDF, it could be a presentation or a data set, um, and you can just privately host it there. So it's, it, it's just there. You don't have to publish it. Um, and it can be any kind of documentation um, that you can share with a private link to your other researchers or other collaborators. Um, and, and, and then when you're ready, you can publish it. Um, how long will the documents be indexed or how long does it take? Uh, I, I believe it's usually three to four weeks after publication, Google will be able to pick it up and then it'll enter into the Google Scholar in, uh, database. So that's for Google, Google Scholar, as well as Google datasets. That's my understanding. Okay, good. Thank you for the brief explanation on the questions. The next question is from, it, is, it seems from a journal publisher. It is mm -hmm. possible for journal publisher to submit the, their raw data to picture? A journal publisher? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, so there are two, two answers to this. Um, if you are a researcher, you can submit your raw data to a journal publisher using Figshare. Um, and the, that can be then included on your publication if, if they, they partner with us. 
Um, the other thing is that we have publisher partners and it is a requirement to publish um, your raw data with that publisher using Figshare. So it actually depends on your situation um, and what you're publishing and who with. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, any other question? Just type your question. Uh, it's almost an hour for our session. I think it is a uh, quite interesting topic. Uh, maybe later on we can have other session, especially sure. as, yeah, as Stephanie mentioned before, we can discuss about uh, all metric and Steph will discuss about all metric later on. I will talk to the other committee and hopefully we can uh, save the date and we can discuss about this, about um, uh, let me change to this first. Uh, we can we we can uh, add our next topic on um, all metric. Yes, okay? that sounds uh, great. Yeah, let me invite some other question. No, uh, okay. and I can share these slides as well if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. It's very helpful later on. Uh, Steph actually uh, had shared to me via my email. Later on, yes. I will share to you. Uh, yes. For those who want the, um, the slide, uh, I think this slide is very informative. Um, Steph, any other thing you need to deliver? Uh, no, um, people, uh, everyone, thank you for your time. And if you do have questions you would like to talk about with me, you can um, email me anytime and I can I'm sure you, Handover, you can disperse my details. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Actually, for uh, Universitas Andalas in Unan, we had um, conduct several uh, training on Figshare, and some of our uh, staff, our colleague, has used this Figshare to disseminate their research uh, output. And hopefully, after this, uh, you will, uh, the participant will uh, contribute in Figshare and maybe they can contribute in the level of university or uh, maybe their, yeah, their research uh, institution. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Steph, for your time today for our first session. Hopefully we can arrange the next meeting on you. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bapak Ibu, terima kasih. Thank you. Uh, hi. Thank you, Steph. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Uh, jadi ini adalah pertemuan pertama kita untuk seri uh, uh, webinar kita di Unan uh, webinar series. Uh, minggu depan kita akan ada sesi berikutnya. Uh, kita akan ada mengenai Creative Commons juga. Ada topik mengenai Creative Commons. Kemudian juga akan berbicara mengenai akreditasi jurnal mungkin pada pertemuan berikutnya. Kemudian juga ada mengenai Mendeley, Bapak Ibu yang ingin fokus mempelajari tentang Mendeley, kita juga punya sesi khusus untuk Mendeley. Kemudian juga ada terakhir nanti kita juga akan berbicara mengenai bagaimana kolaborasi dengan penerbit-penerbit uh, internasional, level internasional untuk mempublikasikan baik jurnal maupun nanti juga proceeding conference kita. Mudah-mudahan melalui webinar kita ini bisa membangun silaturahmi kita sebagai uh, pengelola jurnal ataupun nanti pengelola, pengelola event-event uh, yang bersifat ilmiah. Kemudian juga mudah-mudahan ini bisa menjadi bekal bagi kita untuk meningkatkan uh, desiminasi dari penelitian-penelitian uh, di kampus kita. Kemudian Bapak Ibu nanti kalau yang ada mungkin saran atau ada saran kemudian ada Uh, mungkin masukan untuk topik-topik yang akan kita bahas, silakan bisa menghubungi kita di uh, pengelola webinar ini. Ada saya, Handoko, kemudian juga ada Pak Ikhwan Arif, nanti Bapak Ibu bisa uh, kontak beliau juga. Kita bisa sharing ya informasi-informasi lain yang mungkin yang menarik untuk uh, kita bahas di webinar ini. Mudah-mudahan ini bisa menjadi langkah awal untuk membuat sebuah seri yang uh, ber apa namanya buang buat sebuah seri yang bernilai saintifik baik pada level nasional ataupun internasional. Terima kasih atas perhatiannya untuk hari ini. Kita berjumpa lagi minggu depan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you next week. Assalamualaikum. Yeah.